Uh, welcome now to this tutorial. For this tutorial, we go look at the topic data analytics with Microsoft Excel. Data analytics now a very important skill we they useful in our world today. And uh, just as the name sound, data analytics now to analyze data. The ability to analyze data now a very powerful skill which will help us in many ways. For those who get business, if it help them make better business decisions, we go improve their business. And the Microsoft Excel na very powerful tool we will use for data analysis. Microsoft Excel they very popular. Many people they use them for different things. Uh, but we go look at how we feel use and manipulate data and analyze data inside this course. Data analysis skills they in high demand across all industry. So that one means say every industry need data analysts. Maybe entertainment industry, agriculture industry, oil and gas industry, all of them they need the services of data analysts. So if you can't be Excel, now added advantage will it help you get high paying jobs for top organizations or companies. So, what thing can be data analysis? Data analysis now say you they extract information from raw data. And how you they extract this information? You they extract them by performing analysis on raw data using special systems. So data analysis now the process of manipulating data with special system. And the goal now say you want to take and discover useful information. You want to take an informed conclusion and you want to take and um, support decision making. What in these special systems they do? Did they help transform? Did they help organize? Did they help model? Did they help clean data? And as we don't talk before, all these things now to draw conclusion, to identify pattern, to make use of data in a better way. You know, say so if you explain numbers to people, if you don't make any sense to them, numbers are just numbers. So, but when you show them charts, when you show them graphs, when you show them analysis, this one will make them understand better. The field of data analysis now feel where they grow very quickly, and uh, this one are because of increased demand for system with you handle big data. Many many companies for our world today then they generate data at an increased rate. So the demand for system with you handle this big data now why data analytics they grow very quickly. Another reason why data analytics they grow quickly, now say the demand of people will get the skill for manipulating data and translating results. That demand self don't increase. So what will be the need for data analytics? As we don't explain before, uh, top companies, top organizations, they need them for effective decision making. Imagine say you just they make your decision on guesswork. That organization will crash or if you run down. If you just they make decisions on guesswork, on on a probability, say maybe this one go happen, if it no happen. So you just decide like this. But when you analyze data, you go see the place where you suppose improve. And you feel make that decision. Say okay, now this thing we want to, to improve our business. Now this thing. And so if they make that decision based on analysis where they don't do so data analytics will help us make effective decisions we go be effective for our companies another reason why we need data analytics now because say they provide insights to customers that one means say it will allow us to tailor customer service according to the customer need so when we don't do analysis we go see the things where the customers need and if you can see, okay, this service we will they provide for the customers, make we just do one like this because they go like and better like this. And if you say, okay, because say we don't see, say the customers prefer this way through the analysis, make we they do one this particular way. And this kind of thing, they build strong relationship with customers. You know, say if you don't build strong relationship with your customers, your business go boom. We need data analytics too to streamline our process and to save money. With data analytics, it will be very easy to focus 
on the area of our business where they bring us profit. So instead make with the focus on different areas at the same time. If we don't analyze, we could see say okay, now this particular area they very effective for our business. And so we could streamline our efforts towards that process and it help us save money. And it could even help us boost our bottom line. When you don't have an improved understanding of which your audience wants, you will waste less time creating adverts and content when not they effective for you and you know the things will not to match your audience interest. So now only the things will go match your audience interest or your customer interest and only the things will go benefit your business now you go do. So now the reasons why we need data analytics be this. So who can be data analysts? Data analysts simply now people where they analyze data. Did they provide value to their companies by taking data? They can use that data to answer questions and then they will communicate the results to stakeholders. If it be insiders, people where they work with you on the job, or if it be your clients. Where these data analysts come to get this data? If you get them from data engineers, if you get them from data scientists. The results where data analysts they communicate fit be past trends. That one I say things we don't happen before. If you just look at the past trends, the things we don't happen before. And then if you take them, see, say, okay, maybe with this one, we do am right for this place, but we're not supposed to do am here. So if you take and make decision on the things where you could do in the future. If it also help you make predictions, just like we don't talk. If you don't look the analysis, you feel predict, say, okay, now waiting the customers like with this. You feel even predict, say, okay, now waiting go bring more money for us with this. So make we focus on this aspect of our business. And if it also give you other insights into your business. So some of the work of data analysts now to get the data, to clean the data we then get and to organize the data. Cleaning data and I say make you just pick out only required information where you could process from data. Data fit plenty if it consists of several numbers, names, you know, contact information. If it consists of different things, we we not to get meaning to anybody. We know sabi waiting a be, you know. But the work of data analysts now to clean this data, the cleaning now to extract only required information, and then to organize them. Another task now to perform analysis on this data where they don't extract from the data, and then another task now to create dashboard and data visualization this one uh, say maybe they create charts or graph or you they create that data in such a way maybe say anybody where you want present and to go understand them and then data analysts also they in charge of presentation of results to clients or internals so this dashboard this visualization where they don't create will be saying even lame and few understand them they will present them in such a way we say it go even day easy for anybody whether they present them to to understand them. So if they find data analyst jobs for companies, some of the uh, popular designations fit include business analyst, operations analyst, business intelligence analyst, database analyst. Their job descriptions they very similar. And so now some of the destinations you will come across with this if you apply for data analyst jobs. So make we see how data they move inside organizations. Remember, say we don't talk, say data analysts figure their data from data engineer and data scientists. So the people we for we go first get the data and a data engineer. And now them they're responsible for bringing in data from different sources. While data scientists they are responsible for working on all the raw data and then they go convert them into valid information. Data analysts go and collect this information. Data analysts go and collect this information from data scientists. It go manipulate them and then it go present the information in such a way we say clients or other peers if you understand them. So make we can see Microsoft Excel. Imagine say you don't run a company since 1990. 
and for that company you get the information of all your customers we don't patronize you since 1990 up till year 2021 imagine say so they keep all their files and records imagine as those files go plenty because say so you don't sell market to different different customers imagine say one customer will come patronize you for year 2005 come meet you say make you give me information make you provide information say in patronize you imagine the kind of stress we go go through to go look for this person file even if you arrange them very well carefully in rows and columns now still plenty stress if you go find them now can imagine say you feel find all this information of this person in less than one minute by just opening your computer pressing a few buttons and getting the information of the person now which in microsoft excel feed do for us be this microsoft excel a very popular software application both of use perform several logical financial mathematical statistical calculation on data it means say if we enter different kinds of data and if we calculate them easily microsoft excel get the features of spreadsheets that one be say they could use cells where they don't arrange in numbered rows that one be say they don't number the rows and they don't letter the columns you go use this cell to organize data manipulation like arithmetic operations microsoft excel make them they very easy for us to make statistical engineering and financial calculations it also make them very easy to display data in such a way say people go understand them that one be say you feel display your data as graph you feel display them as table you feel display them as chart and it go even they very easy make you display the data where you don't analyze microsoft excel feel do plenty things but now just some of the common things where people they use them for now it be this so people they use them to analyze data as we don't talk before and uh, you feel use them also calculate your data if you enter your data into microsoft excel different types of data and you feel calculate them very easily using microsoft excel microsoft excel will help us create graphs and charts where we see people go understand if you just show them numbers if you don't understand you know say we don't explain them before but if you show them charts if you show them graphs if you show them tables they go understand better and just as we don't explain microsoft excel they effective when we want use and store big data or huge data and then if you want just quickly refer to that data it did very easy with just a few clicks if we search for the data and we go and microsoft excel will quickly carry and come for us so now some of the common use of microsoft excel will be this and uh, as we they proceed for inside this course we could see as we feel do all of these things So make we see as we fit get started with Microsoft Excel. So we go learn as we feel launch Microsoft Excel. How we fit customize Microsoft Excel, mostly with the quick access toolbar, and how we fit save and close Microsoft Excel. So to open Microsoft Excel, if we just come our start button uh, and search for Microsoft Excel. yeah excel 2016 so we double click on it on the open so make i just expand this one so we're going to be using a blank workbook now other templates be this uh, will not be where we go with this now blank workbook we we'll use and then if you check the left side of the screen you could see see you get some recent documents where i don't work on it will bring the options so maybe now those ones i won't use but um for the purpose of this tutorial we will just enter this blank workbook so if you open microsoft excel now which thing you go for see this you see see many items there on top of the screen see many items there 
both up and down the screen. But the one way you go in quick notice now this white sheet. This thing will be like shit, this large white sheet. Now you go for notice if you open Excel. If you come down here, you can see say you don't name them sheet one. So this sheet be like a notebook. Imagine say you get notebook for the first sheet of paper. If you write many things where you want to write, if you do your calculation, if you if you open to the next sheet, write other things. If you open to another sheet, write other things, and all these sheets they inside one book. So now so uh, Microsoft Excel seven P. Now sheet one be this. If you want, if you don't finish for this sheet, maybe you won't work on another sheet. If you just come here, click plus. See I'm new sheet. If I click on, see I'm sheet two. If I click on again, sheet three, sheet four, sheet five, and so on. So we can go back to sheet one. So if you get as many sheets as you want. So all these sheets, they day inside one book. You know, just like the sheet of our notebook. All these sheets, they day inside book one. For example, if you open Microsoft Excel, automatically it will name them as book one. So all these sheets, they under book one. So sheet two, see I'm book one, sheet three, book one, and so on. So inside these sheets, if you write anything we won't write, if it make the calculations we won't make. If you notice them, you go see they not be completely blank sheets. You get some lines with the horizontal lines and vertical lines. You see them, see the horizontal lines, and I see the vertical lines. So all these horizontal lines and vertical lines, they don't divide this sheet into something what would they call cells. This small area here in a cell, you see them. This one and another cell, and another cell, and another cell be this. So all these small small boxes we will see in our cells, and if we type inside them. One thing about the cells be say them get identification. Now, if you look this top area very well, you can see say them letter A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on. This place now we they call columns. So all the columns, they don't let her So now column A be this, now column B be this, now column C be this, now column D, E, F, and so on. If you look this left side too, you go see say they don't number them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on. So now this place we they call rows. This place now column, this place now rows. So now row 1 be this, now row 2 be this. Narrow three with this, narrow four with this. So all these cells they get identification and they are identified by rows and columns. So if we click here, this place fall under column A and row one. If you look this place very well, our name box they don't name up A one. If we move here, you see I'm B one. If we move down here, you see I'm B two. If you can't come down here. Make I give you some time, make you identify them. So if you never finish, this cell now, cell E8, because it falls under column E and row 8. And they don't write them for our name box, E8. So these columns and these rows, they, they help us identify our cells. So make we assume, say I be teacher, and I want input some of the records of my students. For inside this worksheet, so if you just click any box where I want, I click this one, and then input the record of my student. So make I call this one name, the name of the student. I click here, the date of joining. And then uh, here, if you just click the mark. Or the scores where they get under my subject. So here, let's call this a maker or G. Uh, we click down here. Make I just input a very short data. Uh, here we we'll just call this one an away. And here, 
Trick for this one. Musa. Kachi. So, if you look at me, you see, see the name done, they enter into this date of journey. So, if you just come up here, click this place. As I click on like this, it don't highlight all the cells with the inside column C. But not be able to go with that. I want to expand this column. So, if you just click here, if you double click, so if you double click, it will fit in all the data we will enter into now. So date of joining, make me talk, say this one join us on 11th of October 2021. And then uh, Anu Awe joined on the 12th of October 2021. And uh, Musa joined on the 1st of October. So let's say a make our OG is called uh, 90, and Huawei is called 60, and uh, Musa Kachi is called 65. You see, I don't enter the data of my students, my imaginary students. I don't enter their data for inside this place. So now, so if we enter data into Microsoft Excel, this is place as the title of the data. So this is the data, the name data. This is the date data, and then I discuss with this. So now, let's say I don't enter my data now, and I want to save them on top of my computer. So how will it save? To so save our work for Microsoft Excel, if you just come up here, if you look up here, you will see some tabs. File, home, insert, quick layout, formula data review. We will come to this one later. Uh, just like we will come to the other uh, items we did under here later. If you want to save your file on top of Microsoft Excel, you will come this file button. Click on. If you click on, it will bring some options for you. Uh, it will bring some information for you. Some of the properties of the work where you work on. You see, I'm, I never save them yet. Uh, the date where they work on now uh, and the uh, people where they work on now. Now, my own user profile this is for my laptop. So, but if you want to save them, if you look these options very well, you can see save, save us. What is the difference between these two? Save us now if you want to save your document for the first time. So, but save now, maybe you don't save them before, so you want to overwrite or you want. Or you don't edit and then you want to receive them. So, but because you will receive them for the first time, you click save us. So, you ask where well, I want to save them to. Uh, I want to save them to my desktop. So, if I save them to my desktop, you go ask, say, waiting the name. Don't forget, say the name where we identified the other time, now book one. All those sheets, they under book one. But I don't want to make the name be book one. I want to make the name be my spreadsheet. So I could just type them here, my spreadsheet, and then you see them. That's the file name now. So this is save as type. I want save them as Excel workbook. If I want save them as any other format, if you just click on this one, you see different formats: Excel workbook, macro enable, different. If you save them as, if you even save them as PDF. But make I leave them for Excel workbook because now which we want to work on with this and then I will just click save. So if I close this workbook where I work on now and I go my desktop, you don't see them, my spreadsheets. If I double click them, it will open the exact work where I don't save for them. You see them. So and if you edit them, if you do anything. So now so we fit save. I work for Microsoft Excel. So now imagine say we want to enter additional record. We want to add to this data we would not have already. Uh, make I call this one gender. Uh, make a OG male. 
and you away. Sinu Musa Kachi Mio and I won't save her. I don't need to go to save us again. You know, if I click on file, uh, save us. Now, uh, if I want save us for the first time, uh, so I will just click on save. But another easy way where I fit just quickly save now to come up here. You see, I'm save. And then you see, say it don't show us another shortcut we will use control plus s. You see, I'm control plus s now to save. So now the shortcut for saving be that we go see, see some other shortcuts, but now the shortcut for saving be this. So if we click here, you see, I'm you don't save them. Or if you just press control, you go hold control down and then go press s. So if you click control s, you don't save them. So now the same more control s and save. They do so controls now just shortcuts where they use to save our file. So make we see as we fit customize our Excel workbook. If we come up here, we go see say we get some buttons for here. Save, undo. Uh, this one you know the account redo, and then customize quick access toolbar. This place not quick access toolbar. That is anything we want to do, we do one quick. So if you get quick access to save, if you get quick access to undo and other buttons we will put for here. So if you want to customize this quick access to but make it include some of the things we will want or make it remove some of these things we will not want. If you just click here, so if you click here, it will give us some options to add some other things. You see there are only three things there here, save, undo and redo. You see I'm save, undo and redo. So if you add other things like open, new, Email, quick print, print preview, spelling, touch, mouse mode, sort, ascend, sort and ascending order, sort and descending order. If you even open more commands, if you want to remove them, if you just click on them and then click remove. But I like me this three day there. If you want to add other, if you want to remove, they do for instance, if you just click remove. So, you know, good day again and then if you just click ok you see them so we don't become two now two items save and undo i don't come out redo but if i want to make other things did there we feel instead make i come this customized quick access to but if you just quickly come here file if you go to options then if you come here quick access to bar then if you just add some of the things we have add so i would like me that redo did here I just come out and for um, example purpose. If you just click add, then we will look at some other things. We will feed us add to the place. Okay, make I just add copy. Uh -huh. And I think so you don't. So I think you don't. You don't make sense like this. So. Um, if you customize your Microsoft Excel to your own taste, anything where you want make it there, this save us. Instead, make you just go file and go save. If you just add them to it, but uh, I know you like make it there my own. So I just if you just remove them. So I don't do okay with these four items for my quick access toolbar. If you just click, okay. If I don't want to make the quick access toolbar there here, if I want to make them just there somewhere here, if you just Tick this box. Show quick access to bar below the ribbon. You see, if I click OK, you don't see them. You don't come out for this place. They show them for you. But I like make it there. So I'm going to. So I will return them. So you see them. I like make it there. So now, so if we customize our page for Microsoft Excel, so if we work on this one now, if you just maybe want to copy this name, if you just click copy, if you come here, right click and then paste them. See, them. so we can copy, we can paste, we can cut, we can paste. So let me just click on do paste, and then we're fine with this. So now, so if we customize our Microsoft Excel page. 
So now make we identify some other things with the we will see for uh, this our Microsoft Excel page. So if we look down here, we could see some items. Uh, we don't identify seeing our sheets with this. Uh, but if you look down here, you can see the status. The status of our page now, let's say our page they ready. Now this status by the shows the status of our page. I'll make I type something. So let's say here, I want to type um, absentee. So you see as I type on, the status don't change. So the shows here, they enter data. You know? If I remove them, if I enter formula, maybe I won't add this score and this one. You see, um, the status don't change to point in point mode. So this status is very important because it will tell us the status of our page. If we come the um, right lower side of the screen, you see, um, this is the page layout. Now, normal page layout with this. Uh, if we click on this, you see, um, it will change the page layout. Then if we click on this too, you see, um, it will change the page layout to only the place where we don't enter our data. So if we click on normal, we can have our normal page layout. Uh, here, uh, this place will be called zoom slider. So to our zoom slider, we feel zoom in or we feel zoom out. So maybe we try to zoom in. You see, and then we we'll try to zoom out. So this particular percentage here, the zoom level, will tell us the percentage of the zoom. So I won't make it be hundred percent. So it's perfect like this. So it did okay like this for me. So now I zoom slider with this, and then this we already know using this one they do. So if we use this one, just go around column. If I work plenty very well, uh, so if we use this, this one. And you know, just check everything we really do. So now, just like this ruler, you know, if you go up or down, and so now, now their own function be that. So we don't see the status bar, the name box. So here now the formula bar. So if we the enter formula, we we'll see them here. If any of this data will be inside the cells, if then be formula, we will see the formula for here. As we continue for this course, we're going to use we go use formula and we go see how we fit use this place. Check our formula. So now formula bar with this. So any formula we don't write for inside cell. Once we click on top that cell, we go see the formula for here. This place now just number. Now why will you see number for here? if to say now formula we take get this sixty and the formula we go see for here, not just sixty. So here now the insert function button. If we click on it, will ask us the function we want to use, maybe not product, not some average, and so on. As we continue for this course, we will learn as if we use functions. So if we look up here, we'll see some other items. You know, we don't talk about this one file, and then home, insert, page layout, formulas, data, review, and view. Uh, this one's now we call tabs, and under these tabs we have some ribbons. So uh, now our own tab with this, and now the ribbons we do under with this: the clipboard, the font, alignment, number, styles, cells, and editing. Uh, the clipboard now see maybe we want uh, maybe we want format to paint tab. Maybe we don't paint a particular cell or some cells, and then we want format them, want edit them. They maybe we won't copy, like we copy this name, paste for here the other time, or maybe we won't cut something. The fonts now, maybe you won't manipulate the font of your data. So, here, if you change the type of font, now Calibri will they use if you change them to any font where you want, or if you change the font size, if you, if you bold them, for example, if you want bold name, see them, you don't bold, if you put them for italics, if you underline them. Uh, if you see add borders and then different things alignment now see you won't change as your data align so for example you see now this alignment today use 
if we say make it align for center, if you change them, you see the name don't align for center. And if you want to make it align for right, you see them. So we'll make it do like this. So this is what alignment is for. For number, we we'll use this one to change number format. So if you change them to date, if you change them to currency, if you change them to time, if you change them to percentage or anything. Uh, the styles. You know, if you want form, if you don't create table and you want format your table, if you create any style you want. This one are for manipulation within the cell. If you want to insert a cell or you want to delete a cell, you want to format a cell. And then this one are for editing. Maybe you want to sort and filter. Maybe you want to find and select to go. We we use this editing as we the continue for this course. So now the ribbons we do under our own tab be this. For the insert tab, now if you want to insert anything inside Excel. So for Excel, if you insert tables, if you insert illustrations like pictures and so on, if you insert add-ins from our store or maybe your add-ins, then if you insert charts, there are different types of charts, recommended charts, pivot charts, you know, all these graph, pie chart and so on. If you insert store, spark line, filter, links, this one maybe you want to link them with another Excel work we don't do. Uh, if you insert text and symbols, so now we insert tab they do with that and some of the ribbons with this. So uh, page layouts now maybe you want alter the page where you they use. You want modify the page. If you change the page theme, the color, the fonts, the effects of your page, and then here are the page setup. So if you change the margin of your page, if you change the orientation. If you change the size, this one are the paper size. If you choose, you know, A4 paper and the common one. If you choose different types of uh, uh, page size, then page area and so on. Then uh, now scale to fit. This one has to say you won't modify your page. And then your sheet options and then you get some arrange options for your page. So formula, this one I say you won't use some formulas, you know, some functions. If you be able some, if you be real, recently used functions. Uh, if you build some financial functions or some other functions we, we don't use, we could see some functions we could be useful for data analysis as we continue for this course. So, as uh, some other ribbons we did under the formula tab, now uh, define names, formula auditing, uh, calculation. Then, data this one, our tab will be say if it's you know, if we get external data from different sources from access, from web, from text. If you get from uh, if you get from maybe SQL or maybe another database, uh, if you get your data from connection, if you sort and filter your data, and then other data tools, the go figures, you know, use manipulate or work, uh, data forecast and then outline. So another tab now review. This one I say maybe you want to proofread your spelling, uh, you want insights. You know, you want to translate your language, uh, you want to add comments, or you want to make other changes. And then view. So your workbook views, now the normal one with this, then page break, page layout, we don't see for here before. Uh, so then the, you want to make your grid lines show, your headings, formula by, you want to make the ruler show, if you, if you just tick them. And then the zoom, we don't, we don't see that one for here. Uh, for our zoom slider, we will zoom out and zoom in. Then we will if we change our windows in different ways and then macros. So we're going to see some of these uh, ribbons and their functions as we continue for this course. So make we go back to our home. So maybe we see as we just quickly navigate around the Excel and then how we will use some shortcuts. Uh, some of the popular shortcuts we will go to use now. Our control button for our keyboard, our shift button, and then the arrow keys for our keyboard. So we'll just quickly create a table and see how if you just quickly navigate around them. So make I delete this one. So make I just input new table for here. Let's call this one one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so 
you can just hold uh, shift and down to highlight everything and then you can just drag them down like this uh, you can just make it a row of 100 so 100 is fine so you see uh, you don't auto fill up from 1 to 96 so now row 100 is stop but not forget if you don't start from row 1 so now why you did not six without so we can just drag them like this so don't want to fill them so um make you consider as we feel just quickly navigate around this data we don't create the reason why we create this table we say you know if you get data we just long so if you want to move around your data if you click your uh up down right left arrow keys with your keyboard or if you just take your mouse move anywhere for you but imagine say your data can't long you know if you just they click the um, right arrow key you know and you feel they click on so they could they take your time so but once you feel navigate very easily so we're going to use our control plus arrow keys so if you click your control if you click and hold your control key and you press the forward arrow key you see um, I'm at the end of our sheet with this uh may we just click control and left arrow key again so if you click control and down arrow key it will take you to the end of your sheet down and then if you click control and up arrow key you see it it goes back up so if you just come here to the row where our data starts if we click on control and right arrow key it will take us to where our data starts the first cell where our data starts if we click on control and right arrow key again it will take us to the end of our data not be the end of the sheet now but the end of our data so if we click control and down again it will take us to the end of our data if we click control and the left arrow key it will take us to the border of our data so we click control and um, the up arrow key you see um, it will take us to where our data starts. We can just we can include border for the data so we can see them very well. Okay, so now we have our borders. So if you use control and arrow key, quickly navigate for our data and uh, that one will make our work easy. Imagine see we get plenty of data, way long, if you just use control and arrow key. So if you just click control and forward or control and backward, Excel will not say they talk about your data. So it will carry it to the end of the data, to the borders of your data. But if you won't go anywhere with the, maybe in between your data, that one if you use your arrow key ordinary arrow key so excel if you don't know where you won't go you know if it be maybe the third column of your data you won't go and so now you go use your arrow key direct yourself go there earlier when i enter the first data of the students you know say i click here and it highlights everything with the row but what if you can highlight the data from inside the work if you just click shift and then our arrow keys so if you click shift and forward arrow keys it highlights if you click shift and down arrow keys it highlights if you click shift and up it clears the highlight and if you just click shift and back so when you want to highlight all this row how you feel you if you just press ctrl plus shift you hold it down and then you press the forward arrow key so if you want to highlight all your data if you just hold ctrl plus shift and then the down arrow key you see don't highlight all our data so now so if it use all these shortcut keys to highlight your data and to navigate excel so make we go up and click back and press the back arrow key to remove the highlights so the next thing we will look at now shortcuts so the next thing we will look at now shortcuts Remember, say we don't see one shortcut for here, you know, control plus save, but now maybe we see some other shortcuts. So if you press Alt for your keyboard, 
you will see some numbers and some letters here so you don't assign numbers and letters to the items with your quick access toolbar and to your tabs so our save now you click if you if you press one now you know it says one don't appear on top of this save so if you press one for your keyboard you don't save your work with that so if you press alt again you see um, if you want go maybe formula if you just press m so make i press m you see um, after pressing that m you don't assign shortcuts letters to all these ribbons we did here so now if i press alt again it will come out and so if you see if you press them again you will see all the shortcuts now what in these shortcuts they do these shortcuts they make our work easier as you they use these shortcuts they go you know if you first start they use them um you fit things it may be the day uh, very difficult to remember or to use um or not just like car if you learn how to drive car you know initially it would be difficult but as time goes on it would be used to run so imagine say i won't go save my file for here file if you just press f you see them and then if you press s I save i won't print them if you press p so this shortcuts they make our work easy and they make our work faster so now how if you use this shortcuts be that so now imagine say i won't close this worksheet if you just press alt if you press f to go to file and then c to close so you see i never save this uh, work where i do for my worksheet so if you just come here click save you don't save or cancel so if i save them it will save the work where I don't do and then it will close the Excel spreadsheet. So make I click save. 